When it comes to long range shooting, one of the things you're gonna find is most important in the whole system is the optic that you choose. Throughout my whole shooting career, I keep running the same dilemma where guys can tell you every single infinite detail about their rifle systems except their optic. And they can tell you who made it and what the power range is and maybe if it's in mils and minutes, but they don't understand how they work. So we're gonna take a few minutes and walk from one end to the other, teach you about your optic and show you the functions that you're gonna to need to choose to shoot long range. One of the first things you're gonna look through is your ocular lens. Part of that is a setting on the back side that's a mechanical device is for your diopter setting. And that's to set the prescription of the scope to your eye. If your scope has the option, your power setting will be right in front of that to allow you to go up and down in magnification. Your main scope body is your tube thickness, whether it be one inch, 30 or 34 millimeter, or some of the oddballs that are out there that are a little bigger. The bigger the tube is, the further the reticle moves. That means the further you can shoot and dial for. Then you have your objective bell and your objective lens, your elevation knob, your windage knob, and for specific long range scopes, you want a parallax dial also. Now, all of these can be in different places, of course, depending on manufacturer. Now, usually when I ask people how many lenses are inside the typical modern scope, usually I get four to five, and that's about the average answer. But honestly, it's between 11 and 13 lenses in most modern scopes. Those lenses consist of several different types. Some are concave, some are convex, some are flat, and all of those are put together in a very specific way that corrects the resolution as the light goes through your scope. Inside of your main tube is another tube called your Erector tube. And inside that, there's a lot of things going on. So there's two main types of scopes that are on the market right now, a first focal plane or a second focal plane. In a first focal plane scope, your crosshair is in front of your power setting. And that allows your crosshair to get bigger and smaller with the image. So any of your stadia lines or your subtensions will always be correct size to your target image. If it's a second focal plane, it's behind that power setting. So as the image gets bigger and smaller, your crosshair is always the same size. So all those subtensions that are on your reticle are only correct at one place on your power knob. So the biggest difference in first and second focal plane is how the user ends up using them and what conditions they're gonna be using them in. That's a personal preference and that's something that as you grow in your knowledge, you can pick which one's right for you. In long range scope specifically, you have one additional adjustment, that's your parallax adjustment. When you move that knob, it actually moves the focal length of your reticle backwards and forwards with the focus of your optic. When it's set correctly, your crosshair is in perfect focus and your target is in perfect focus, and that gives you the correct focal length. If you're out of focus with your parallax, then essentially you're creating standoff between your reticle and your target. And as you move your head, that's gonna give you a different aiming point. Reticle choices are all over the place. So whatever you like, whether it's a busy reticle that have marks everywhere that mean something, or a simple reticle, that's gonna be your choice. All of these things put together give you a platform specifically built to make you successful while you're looking at a long range target.